Hi, this is Sheila Stromberg, Notorious SHE. I am showing a tutorial today on how to work scale mail in your knitting. Um, this is a technique that I use in my newest pattern. Um, it's for my ebook Hob Mitts, and it is for Galadriel because she's so fantastic and she obviously can kick butt, and so she needs some sweet armor. Um, I think scale mail is amazing and I just discovered it and holy crap, it's like so cool. Um, so I am just going to show you what I did. I know there's a few different ways to work scale mail. Um, the way that I do it, I like best though, because it reinforces the scale. A lot of people knit it and they just put the scale in the knitting and then they're kind of like flopping around. I practiced a few times with that and it did not do what I wanted it to do because the scales were just like, they wouldn't lay flat like this. Like this, they will stay where they're supposed to stay. So I think that this is a really good way to do it. Um, so I'm going to go over it in this. Um, so the scales that I'm using, I bought um, from this online supplier, the ringlord.com. And um, they are really cheap on there. So if you're in, um, the company is in Canada. So if you're in like North America or Central America, um, it's pretty cheap to have shipped. And um, they were really a good price. But if you're in like Europe or Asia or wherever else, um, you might find a distributor that is cheaper to ship to you. Um, the scales that I'm using today are the sizes um, small and then large from their website. There's another size in between, but they didn't have for me the matching colors that I wanted. So I went with large and the small. Um, but you can use different sizes if you prefer. Um, you know, just go in there and see if they have the color you want and the size you want. Um, and then these, the color is called um, Champagne on their website. And then the yarn I'm using, oh my gosh, it's so nice. It's from Old Main Ant Yarns. And um, it's their Superwash Merino 4-ply. The color is Cold Sheep. I love it. Oh my gosh, it was expensive. But it was so worth it. It's so, so pretty. Um, and it's like perfect for Galadriel, I think. Um, okay, so let's get started. So I've just worked up this as a little sample. This isn't the right size for any of the sizes in the pattern because um, I didn't want to work a great big row for this demo. Uh, okay, so this is after you um, get into the work. You'll do the finger cuff as it's written and then you work kind of just like a straight section. Um, and then we're going to begin at the part that says establishing the scale pattern. Um, so all of the sizes are the same. They're going to knit three, one, two, three. And then you're going to place a marker and that's just going to tell you where is the pattern happening. Um, it's not, it just, you know, establishes the pattern. So then we're going to go to the chart. So row one of the chart, we knit one and then we're going to place a scale. So if you can see on the samples that I've made, I have the one big scale and then a small scale stacked together. I only did that on the bottom row. So you can do this if you want to, or you can go and just use just a small scale like that. You don't have to use a big one and a small one. I just like the way that it looked. So if you're going to knit a scale, you just lay the scale over the stitch on the left-hand needle, and then I'm gonna lay a second one because I like them stacked for this. And then you just knit the stitch like that. Oops, I split the yarn. It's a little harder to get through than a regular stitch but you'll get used to it really quite quickly. Um, then we're gonna knit one, two, three, and then we're gonna do another one. And if your scales are a different size, you might need to redistribute how far apart they are. Just mess with it and see which way it looks best and lays nice and flat. And if it doesn't look good, rip it out because it's better to fix it than to just pretend like it's fine and then never wear it. <laughs> Um, okay, so then we're going to place the last one. So we're just repeating on the chart as it says row th or stitches three through six. And you'll have more than I'm doing on this demo. There'll be more um, repeats of the chart. And then knit stitch seven. And then we're going to place our marker. Oops. I'm going to place our marker. And then we're going to knit to the end. So I've left on these the back side just plain because like you will not be able to be functional if there's scales on both sides. So just leave it plain like that. 
The thing that's interesting with the scales is that you can't even feel them on the inside of the glove. I thought maybe you'd feel them like poking you or sharp or whatever, but you can't feel them at all. You'd never even know they're there, which is cool. Okay, so now we're gonna get ready to do row two. So we're gonna just knit to the marker. Okay, so now the row two on the chart has um, a little bit of a strange um, stitch for the first stitch. Um, this is something that I, I call reinforcing the scale. This is how I got it so that the scales lay how we want them to and not be flopping around all over the place. So you're actually gonna go not through the stitch that we placed the scales on, but the one right below it. You're gonna go through the center of the scales, through the center of the row below it, yarn over, and then you're gonna pull that yarn over through the center of the scales and leave it kind of long like that and up here. We don't wanna pull it super tight so that it like bunches up. We want it nice and long like that. And then we're gonna knit these two together. Like, oops, like so. And that reinforces one um, to the left. And then we're going to just knit the stitch the scale was placed on. And then the next one, we're gonna do the same thing. Go through the center of the scale, through the center of the row, yarn over, draw up a long loop and place it on the left hand needle. And then we're just gonna go slip, slip, knit. Oops. And then we knit one, and then we're gonna reinforce again. Draw it through, up on there. Knit them together, knit the center stitch, and then reinforce again. And if you want to work both of the reinforced stitches as a knit two together, that's fine. Nobody's really gonna be able to see it because they're mostly gonna be hidden. Um, the difference, you can see the difference if you look at them, but honestly, they're gonna be hidden behind the scales, so it's really not detrimental to the look of it if you wanna just be lazy and do them as knit two together. Just on the very last row you place scales, I would do them as a slip slip knit because you will be able to see it on that last row. But, um, all the other rows, to be honest, doesn't need to be slip slip knit. Okay, so that's the end. And then we're gonna knit three. Actually, we just knit to the end. I think reinforcing the stitches also helps it not be able to feel the scale on the inside because it's wrapped around more layers. Also, I was a little worried about the scales maybe like cutting through the yarn since they're kind of, you know, sharp metal, right? I mean, they're not like sharp, sharp, but you know, it is metal rubbing against the knitting and reinforcing it made me feel a little bit more secure about it. Um, okay, so row three. We're going to just knit straight. So this row is a little hard to knit because like the scale makes it so they kind of hang apart a little bit. It's a little harder to knit than normally, but you just knit a plain. And that kind of draws the work back together. If your row gauge is a lot um, looser or tighter than mine, you might need to mess with how many straight rows you put in between these. If your gauge is a lot looser than mine, then you might want to just skip the straight rows, rows three and six and just go straight to placing another scale. Um, but your, your gauge would have to be pretty loose to need to do that, but just, you know, keep an eye on it. You want the scales to be able to, like this, to stack where you don't see the holes on every row. Um, so if you can see the holes and you need to work your scales a little tighter together than mine, and you can mess with this chart all you want and, you know, it doesn't play an impact in any of the stitch counts, so you can change that up whenever you want to. Okay, now we're gonna ro work row four. So we're gonna knit to the marker. So then we're gonna knit three. So then the center of um, where the stitches weren't placed, that's where we're gonna place the next um, scale. We'll just place it on just one this time. And then we knit through it, slide them both off the needle. So it's a little easier when you're working just a single scale than if you're going through two. And 
and then you just knit to the end. They'll kind of be laying all crazy and stuff while you're working it, but they will lay flat after you're done. Okay. All right, so row five. We're going to knit one, two. So you know you're to the stitch that you need to reinforce when the next stitch is the scale stitch. So you don't always have to count. So you're gonna draw the loop up, knit two together. Then we're gonna knit the scale stitch and then draw another loop up. And then we're gonna knit those together. Or slip slip knit. To be honest, I knitted that mine together on the sample one because I'm lazy, but you know, if you're a perfectionist, you can do slip slip knit. Just make sure on the last row you do it as slip slip knit so that it looks pretty. Okay, so that's all there is to it. The next row is just straight, and so then we just repeat it. So the scales will just be kind of groups of an odd number, then even, odd, even. So that way they're, you know, evenly spaced out like that. And um, yeah, that's all you need to know for this pattern. The rest of the techniques are really just very basic, increasing and decreasing, casting on and binding off. Um, so I hope that you guys have fun with these. I loved writing out this pattern, and I'm definitely going to use more of this technique. So keep your eyes peeled for more patterns. Okay, have a good day. Bye.